and you have to be like a monk, you have to do this, you have to be like a sister, you have to be like a brother, you have to be like this, you have to do this, you have to do that. The mood is kept. Martin Luther has been in the game for long. Still, it's not having the peace with God. And one day, a revelation came to Martin Luther. Martin Luther taught back the missing document that the just shall only live by faith, faith in Christ. Amen. So Martin Luther came out and a lot of people followed him. You know what? Some of the sisters, we gave them to the brothers. He married them and he was left with Catherine. I said, Martin Luther, you are more. More, you have to sign a covenant that you will not marry, you will not define yourself with the woman. That is what defines it. If truly you believe that God shall live by faith, you took it Catherine. Martin Luther took Catherine. And the first night they slept, men were inside just to know Martin Luther has done the thing. <laughs> now you come to church and people believe you. You come and believe you. From there, you see Martin Luther did. So you see the story, the redemptive story is still coming. And all through this prayer, there is a cup here. This is the cup of our covenant. That is the lost cup. Jesus gave it to us. And he said, this thing I will not drink again until that day. That thing used to be customary way of marrying. In the age of life, if you want to marry a woman, you go, you give all the things for the woman. Then they will invite the woman and ask the woman, do you accept the man? And if the man takes the cup with the wine, and the woman takes the cup with the wine and goes from the cup, then only she has accepted the man. Then they die, or the man and the family have to go back and prepare somewhere in the father's house where they go for honeymoon. So that's what Jesus said. He said that cup is not going to drink with us anymore. Once we have accepted, once we drink, any time we come to the Lord's table, we drink, it's a sign that we are married to you. We accept you. And the things you brought for whether dowry or pride price, these are the things we are using to keep ourselves until we come. We don't want to define ourselves. We don't want any man to come here. Every man should know that we are married. So we wear our rings, then we do everything. Hey, Christians, if truly you are part of the bride. That's why the spirit is here to take care of the bride so that no man comes around. That's why he gave us the robe of righteousness so that we wear it every day. That's why the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you open up the gifts, there are a lot of things we can decorate ourselves, decorate the church, so that the church will not look weak, paralyzed. Ah, the church has a lot. Hallelujah. Waiting for Jesus. He's not come back. Come back. Come back. And because the guy who will rush through and not do it well, it is not the guy who tells the father I'm going for my ride. It's the daddy who tells the guy go for a ride. Everything I have expected in this ride. That's why he said the day he was leaving the side. That doesn't mean Jesus don't know when he's coming. It's a customer something was trying to teach them, so he left them. So as long as we drink the cup and eat the bread, he says, remember me. Remember me, hallelujah. So that I don't go after any man. So that this world will not trap you. This world is like a snake, so nice, shining. And the snake eats birds and other things with its charming. You will be there, you think it's dead, you think it's a toy. Then suddenly you come around, it opens up its mouth, you are gone. That's what the world is doing. The nice, nice things in this world is the serpent behind. If you give your heart so much to it, I know where you go. So, after Martin Luther brought back the message we save souls, you realize we've lost something. Anytime the church goes into that age, we lose something. We lost the message. Then we also lost the power. But Martin Luther brought the message. But not the power. The gospel is there, but the gospel always works with the Holy Spirit, the power. So Martin Luther brought the word that is the reformation. Reform. Then God brought my uh, John Wesley, Charles Finney, and those people, they brought the power. And the gospel and the power started moving. Hallelujah. Amen. Then many people started coming in. That's where we have the Azusa Street. Bible and all those revival where Jesus will be exalted 
a lot of proud moods will be so this is where the story has come to so you realize this is where we are now this is where the church is this is the period where we call worldwide evangelism this is the whosoever will make up now he's sending the fishermen the fisherman will come with the bait so now is the fishing time we are fishing for men and after the fishing the Bible says I will send the hunters the antichrist shall come and shall hunt those who remain no wonder the first action that the antichrist embark upon is God in Revelation who read that place will give the antichrist power to overcome the saints. He says, wait war against the saints and overpower them. Do you know why? God is telling you, why are you still here? If truly you are a child of God, why are you still here? Don't go with the Is it time? I'll finish you. Then you just run out. So, this is the time. So, you see the storyline is left with a little. And the Bible says, in a blink of an eye, those who are in Christ and those who are dead in Christ will be caught up. That's what we call escape. Yes. They will be taken away from this world <laughs> and they will go to be with Jesus. So you see Jesus have them. You will receive them. And when they are received in the clouds, they will be welcomed by Jesus. So if you go with us on the first flight, you will be welcomed. But when you are welcome, the first question that Christ shall give to you or put to you is that as for the salvation, you did not work for it. That's it, Korea. That says, after the salvation, what you did with your life. That is what the passage will come in. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Those who do not know the way, those who know the way of their father and will not prepare themselves to do it. More scratch. It says, we will be judged. Christians will be judged by Christ in the day. Then the Israelites and those saints who may not go with us and the unbelievers will be judged by Christ in. Amen. Amen. That's why we have the seven judgments. I won't go there. So make sure you do what you have to do before it is too late. We will go and we'll be judged. That is where the big church, the small church, will truly be known. That is why our motives will be weighed. What prompted you <laughs> to do that big church? What gave you powers to do those wonders? Everything will come to you. The Bible says our work shall go through fire. And most people, their works will be saved. But you will be saved. Once you are in heaven, you will go to heaven. You will be saved. But it's like going through fire. Then from there, from the judgment seat of Christ, which is there, we will go, you see the second, up there. All this will take us seven years. So if the rapture should happen now, you know, we are left with seven years. The seven years up there, first one, we we'll go to the judgment seat of Christ, then we'll be given rewards and awards and all that. Then also we we'll go to the last table. That's where a feast will be thrown to us. Isaiah 25, a feast, a big feast. And when we are going to that feast, you wear your crown, I wear my crown. If you don't have a crown, you wear your, your, your gown. That is why that song you sing uh, will, will, will be meaningful. And if I find you are we just your lips. Because you don't have anything to worship. People are putting their crowns down to worship. And you, you have nothing. All you have is just an of <laughs>
God is the Holy Spirit. And before that church, the church will go, he says, until the falling of the first. That's right now. If you tell people, you come to church, eh, change your life. You need that person is not giving heed to that. You don't just, you just pray for the person and continue with your life. Maybe he has to go so that we can go. But the Bible says, first, they will have to fall away before we can go. You see, when the uh, spaceship is about to leave, it's so big. But you see, some have to bend and just go up. Then the little have to go. Maybe you have to go so that we can go. Amen? Amen. So, he says, the church has to go. Before the Antichrist can fully manifest himself personally. Now the spirit is there. And the Bible talks about it in 2 Thessalonians. Let me go read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He says, the Antichrist, he is a manifestation of Satan. And he is behind all the lawlessness. You see, all the fashion and the things that are coming. You see, in those days, a lady dressed and you realize is covering the lady well. Now, waist low. He does that, everything is so lawlessness. And you think God is happy about this? No. 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 Now, a man would dress, you see, some sort of dressing. You realize this? No law. No discipline. In discipline. Look at all the things that are happening. The Bible says these things are signs of somebody who is about to manifest. The wicked one. He says he puts himself in the church and called himself God. Now, men call them, they, they put up some kind of front like they are called. When they are coming, the kind of pomp, the kind of Jesus is outside knocking at the door. Yes. That humble Jesus. The ministry of Jesus is not power ministry. The ministry of Jesus is humility. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Humility has power. But the ministry of power is Satan. For he desires to have power beyond the God. That is why we don't run after power, we run after Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. So many things are going to take place here. The Bible says one fourth of the world's population will die through farming, disease, and a whole lot. Then another one third will also die because of nuclear war. There's going to be war. In the small, small war we hear about, hey, it's going to trigger. The whole world will meet definitely in a place called Medino. There is a place called Medino. Mm -hmm. This place, Napoleon saw this, this far, 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 far when he was coming from war. And he saw with them and said, ah, this place will be good for warfare. No, no, it's a prophecy. That place of Medino, that is where the final show down. That's the final show down. That's what I normally say, he who laughs last, laughs best. That's where Christ shall laugh. Amen. Says all oh, that the demons and all that these people, mankind were doing. When you go, you can Google Mondays. Mondays, money has come. That chip is ready. It's on track. Hallelujah. Amen. Go and see a lot of secret things that are going on. All the planes, all the war things that are, have been manufactured, you use them. All the B 15, all the Bs. Up to B 52, B all. Have you seen the B 52 before? It's like it's like the bat. It's always coming. You know, you know, um, cover it. It's always coming. That plane took off from Missouri straight to Gaddafi's place, this place of you, and it went back. 25 hours non stop return trip back to Missouri in the cover. So we just went out there and tried it. And the soldiers of Gaddafi went out there. They were looking at the foundation of Gaddafi's mansions as well. Oh. Uh -huh. But this is the time that we need to go to God. That He is not interested in the death of any sin. He wanted us to know Jesus, give our lives to Him, be healed and be empowered so that we become useful in His hands. It's so much I won't go there. Let